a sunny day, plants flowering, the chooks clucking, the veggies growing. There are so many things that make me happy when I'm out and about, including seeing and hearing my garden buzzing with bees. There are more than 1,500 species of native bees in Australia, and they play an incredibly important environmental role, working tirelessly as pollinators. So it makes sense that your garden is as bee-friendly as possible. That means providing food for them with flowers, water to drink, gardening organically without any sprays, and providing habitat, which means somewhere for them to live. Which is why I'm making a bee hotel. I'm using an old plastic TV. These are great because they have lots of vents in the sides, back and bottom for good air circulation. And I've put a bit of core flute up the top so the rain can't get in. You could also use an old computer monitor or even a hardwood box. Now, if you're going to use wood, make sure you don't use chipboard because it won't be weatherproof. Native bees are very choosy about where they want to live, so I'm going to provide them with different types of accommodation to appeal to the different species. Some species, like carpenter bees, like to build their nests into dead, pithy stems. And you can use plants such as blackberries, hydrangeas, grapevines, or in this case, I've got some dried fennel stems. I've just held these together in a piece of old bamboo. But if you don't have any dried, you can make your own from fresh stems, which will dry pretty quickly anyway. Simply strip off the foliage and then cut lengths to ensure that you have at least 10 to 15 centimetres of pithy stem before any joints, because that's the depth they need to make their nest. Once you've got a lot of pieces cut, then you can simply tie them together with twine and put them into your hotel. I'm also using some bamboo stacked into an earthenware pipe. The principle is the same. You need to cut the bamboo just below a joint so you have 10 to 15 centimetres of hollow stem with an enclosed end to entice them in. Other bees, like leafcutter bees, would in nature live in borer holes. So I'm going to drill some holes into these cut logs to recreate that. Space them about two centimetres apart and to a depth of at least 10 centimetres. And make sure the timber isn't chemically treated. Bees love different diameter holes between three and eight millimetres, so mix it up a bit. Use sharp drill bits to minimise burrs so the tunnels are smooth and inviting for potential tenants. Blue-banded bees, like 50% of the South Australian species of native bees, actually like to burrow into clay-rich soils. So I pack some sifted clay into these earthenware pipes, or you could do the same things into concrete building blocks, and then you simply push holes in. Now, the holes need to be about 8 millimetres wide and, again, 10 to 15 centimetres deep. I think I've got enough materials. It's time to stack the TV. There are no real rules about how you put this together, but try and get a nice, even spacing of the different types of habitat and pack it tightly so that nothing can move out of place. Finally, you can fill in any gaps with leftover pithy stems or small pieces of bamboo. In southern Australia, a native bee hotel should ideally be facing northeast in a sheltered, sunny position, possibly even with a bit of semi shade, so some bees can have sun and some can have shade. The height should be over a metre off the ground and less than two metres. I can't wait to see what appears on this TV. I'm sure it'll all be B grade, but it's just the way I like it.